proper food. No, maybe not. Looks good. Oh, yeah. Look at this, she's absolutely fine. This must be five feet. Oh, I can't move. So you can see, although we're grazing with sheep, we are not just annihilating all of the grass. So there's lots of different lengths, there's some shorter stuff and there's some really long stuff. And there's some weed species as well, well what a lot of people would call weed species. Um, but that just provides habitat for insect, insects and stuff. Um, so yeah. It doesn't look pretty to a lot of people, but actually there's loads and loads of grass here for them. And if we don't overstock the fields and we just go a bit, a bit ginger, so we've got 23 ewes and a ram in this field, it's 24 sheep. Um, there's a good bit of grass here for a good while. And uh, there's plenty of habitat for birds and insects, or well, maybe not so much insects at this time, but plenty of habitat for wildlife generally, which is great. And so I've just fed uh, Forge with his, well, and his ewes. Well, he's actually got an extra ewe now, and um, this guy has got one less because some pillock, in their infinite wisdom, walking down this footpath, as you can see he's quite well walked, decided to undo the string on the gate and leave the gate open. Just a bit, but enough that literally um, I just saw a U come out. <laughs> so I don't know, they might have even mixed up. I'd actually have to check their ear numbers. But we've got, well, actually, we've, I don't know, there's one down there as well. So hopefully it's only just happened today. But, um, but there we are. At least the little U's are still with the Jacob rather than the Texel. So here we've got some U's and three Rams. Apollo, the grey ram here, this is the field he's actually supposed to be in. And a couple of the ewes are supposed to be in here with him. But these ewes here, for instance, this ewe, this ewe, should have both been with the Jacob ram, which is over there. And then a few of the other coloured ones should have been with the Jacob ram. And then, including that one coughing over there, actually. Need to have a look at her tomorrow. And Ford, the big Texel ram on the left there, he was with the rest of them. So he was with most of them. 
Someone in their infinite wisdom thought it'd be a good idea to open the gate, run alongside the footpath separating the Texel and the Jacob, which was great. But anyway, so I was moving them back. So I worked them back, because there's obviously a lot of fields here. So I moved them across the field next to this one um, so I could split Apollo and his views off tomorrow, put Apollo out, and then move the Jacob and Forge out and get him and his use. But as it happens, it's not the end of the world because they should have all been served, but why people feel the need to open gates when they're not even allowed to go through them, they're not on footpaths. I made a point of putting of not putting a group either side of a gate that has to be open and shut for a footpath. So I've only literally um, had them near footpaths. I haven't you know, like Blackbird should have been with Apollo. This grey one should have been with the Jacob. Most of them should have been with Forge. It's just annoying because someone's thinking, looking and thinking, oh, they need more grass, or they, they'd all be better living as one big happy group. The problem is I'm now going to potentially have small Shetlands, like this Moret here, that should have been with the Jacob, who's got a nice narrow head, um, potentially in lamb to my big Texel ram, which is a bit of a nightmare, to be honest. Okay, so we're just um, bringing the rams back from Summer Hill, where they've been with the ewes. We split them off a couple of weeks ago, actually, but they're, um, they've just been in a field on their own. We're actually just going to put them in their winter grazing today here in Amaroff, so it's about a mile up the road. So same holding and everything, it's just um, just a little, little way away. Hey boys, they're actually a little bit too interested in the ewe lambs over there. So we've got a, pet, a group of um, hello forge. We've got a group of ewe lambs that have got various things wrong with them, mostly with their feet. Actually, but there's about six or eight over there. I think we'll put them in here because there's a nice bit of grass actually. And there's only three of these guys, so that'll be perfect for them for a bit. Ooh, a bit wet though. Well then, boys. So they are food motivated, thankfully. You can see, I've got a little bucket of food here. Forge is quite a fan. The Apollo's already in. And Jacob's just bringing up the rear. So we don't feed them a great deal. Um, but it does mean they will, well, they will just follow us really, which makes life slightly easier. So yeah, sea view for the winter. It's always quite mild here, so it doesn't really get a lot of frost. And there's actually a bit of a old shed from when there used to be horses here in the bottom that they can go into if the weather's really bad, which is nice for them really. They're not really soft enough to need it, but they'll probably make the most of it given it's there. So some of our ewes are in Summer Hill. Four badger faces coming towards me, which is a bit unusual. They usually run the other way. It's weird though how they um, always form a flock within a flock, or there is more than four, but. The Shetland. Should be a few more. Badger face. Hey, Flo. <laughs> you never run away from anyone, do you? Big girl. Some empty mineralic buckets trying to take with me. So you see, there's not huge amounts of grass, but well, certainly not good grass, anyway, but there's plenty of this stuff which is kind of keeping them ticking over through the winter just about to see the sea actually a little bit low down
So we've just got um, this group of ewes uh, in a holding pen just waiting for the sheep scanner so we can um, well, find out how many of them are pregnant and how many lambs to expect. mostly single so far to be fair is a good thing for us So we've just scanned the sheep and um, got kind of what we wanted, which is, I think we're at 133%, which is quite low, low for a lot of commercial guys, but we've got a lot of old sheep and to be honest, we only really want them having singles. Uh, so old Welsh mountains, uh, old Welsh mountain sheep, uh, brokers mostly, so not a lot of teeth in their mouth in some cases. So actually one lamb is plenty for them. Um, so that's fine. So we've just split the singles and the twins at the moment. Well, twins and we've got one triplet, which is a bit annoying. Uh, so the orange dots are singles. So we've got this. Well, they're annoying. And one of the twins has jumped in with the singles, which is a bit annoying. That's a typical sheep. Um, and then there we've got our twins, which we've got green dots on. So you can see these have got green dots. So this is Flo. So Flo is Sid sheep. And she is having twins this year, which she's very happy about. Last year she had a single. So that's good. And um, <laughs> they were really clean actually, because you can see the grass is quite nice. But the pen that we've just handled them in is very wet. So um, they're not clean anymore. But that's, you know, that's what that is. Um, so you see at the moment they're just literally on grass and mineral, they've got mineral buckets just from our local CCF. So you see the grey one there is, she just stuck her head in a mineral lick. Um, it's just a high energy mineral lick, so is that one now. So that's a bit of supplementary feed and um, it also gives them all the trace vitamins they need to hopefully grow healthy lambs. Um, so yeah. In one of our previous videos, you can see Flo um, lambing. So was that that'll be her lamb last year? Yeah, um, 2020 now. Cool. nice pair of lambs so she's lambed on her own overnight obviously outside and the weather's been rubbish she's cleaned them off pretty much black I think a few bits of white
Good morning, it's the 15th of March and we have just started lambing which is really fantastic news. We were hoping to start about a week ago and I always think everything will start on the day, you know, the day it should and we're pretty much always uh, dragging our feet for the first week. Uh, but we have got a few lambs, we'll just go in and check them out. So we've got a really pretty set of black twins out of um, this really lovely grey faced Dartmoor Shetland Cross U. Um, grey's really not a very common colour for that cross. We've had her and her brother, who were twins, had that and that was it. And her lambs are out of Jacob, so we were hoping they were going to be spotty, but they're both black at the moment. But they may well go grey with a bit of luck. So these were born a day or two ago, I think. And um, then we've got this little guy who was literally born about an hour ago. So he's a lovely little lad. So he is obviously out of a badger face you. And he is a Texel cross. So his dad's Forge, big Texel boy. You can see this pretty little lady has got um, an orange dot on her side, which means I know she was only supposed to have one lamb. She did it herself, just put them in the pen well, just after they were born, and then um, makes life a bit easier for the little guy, getting lost and stuff. And there's so many predators up here, the idea of leaving them out is a bit risky for me. I'm not massively keen on it. I would if I had to, but at the moment we've got space. So... So yeah, 